Howdy, gang. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And thank you for joining me for another stumble through. I've got a handful of customers right now who are looking at ways to optimize their IT operations, especially in an effort to save costs. To that end, Red Hat has something called the Migration Analytics Toolkit. So in this episode, we'll be deploying cloud forms in order to run the Migration Analytics Toolkit. And I'll show you how you can quickly take an inventory of your infrastructure and workloads in order to see if Red Hat can provide you some additional cost savings and flexibility. So let's jump right in. Now this is the Migration Analytics product page on the Red Hat website. I'll of course link this down below. Something I uh, highly suggest doing is taking a quick read of the page. It gives you a good little synopsis of what we'll be doing here. In fact, we'll be downloading cloud forms, deploying cloud forms, scanning the environment, the infrastructure we provide it, and then taking that analyzed data, uploading it to the Red Hat Cloud, and gaining insight from the SaaS offering. Something else I'd highly suggest is taking a look at this little migration analytics summary video. Two and a half minute video, very cool. Definitely check that out. If you don't already have a CloudForms subscription, what you'll wanna do is click on this request an evaluation button. This big red button, you can't miss it. You'll be prompted to sign up for a, uh, an evaluation. It is 60 days for free, so plenty of time to gain insight from the Migration Analytics Toolkit. And you'll click continue, and then it'll prompt you for a form to log in with your Red Hat account. This can be an account that you sign up for yourself, or ideally, maybe something part of your organization. And then uh, from there, you'll be provided some additional information on how to access cloud forms and that'll be out of the downloads page so if you are at the customer portal you can click downloads at the top and scroll down to the cloud computing section click on red hat cloud forms you'll want to make sure to pull down the appliance that matches the deployment environment that you're going to be setting this up on this could be red hat virtualization this could be an aws different options there for you what we're going to be doing in this instance is deploying it to vSphere, so a VMware environment. So we'll click on download. I've actually already got that downloaded, so we won't worry too much about that. And once it's downloaded, you'll want to start deploying it, right? So I've already got my vSphere client, vCenter, loaded here. What we'll want to do is right click on one of our hosts and select deploy OVF template. Now you can point it to a shared server that's residing upon but since we just downloaded it to our local system here we can navigate to where that file is it'll verify the OVA give this VM a name I'll just call it CFME for cloud forms management engine select the compute resource or host you want to deploy this on it'll do some validation of the OVA and after a quick little scan it goes yeah this is cloud forms it's by Red Hat here's some basic information that the OVA provides. We'll click through to next, select a storage destination for this virtual appliance and click next. Select what sort of virtual network you'd like to attach it to. Also click next through here. It gives you a final uh, screen to describe the appliance that's being deployed. Click finish. And it'll take just a little moment while the OVF uh, packages unpacked and deployed to this host. All right, that didn't take too long. So now that we have the OVA deployed, it created a little appliance here, this virtual machine, and you can just start this up from here. Now, before we do though, I do want to attach an additional disc to this machine. So let's right click on it and go to edit settings. You want to select add new device and from the drop down menu, hard disk. 16 gigs is perfectly fine for this little demonstration environment. I'm just gonna click auto detect settings on that just because that's a normal workflow for me. Uh, and from there we can just click okay and we'll start the cloud forms appliance. From here we'll launch the remote console and just wait for it to boot. All right, now that it's booted up, we could continue from this web console from uh, you know that we launched from vCenter. Alternatively, what I prefer to do is actually go through Cockpit, and you can access that with one of these web console links that it kind of 
provides you up at the top at the login prompt. So we'll just go to that IP 115. And port 9090. We'll click through the self-signed certificate message. The username is going to be root and the password is smart VM. Of course, you probably want to change that eventually. From here, we've got to do a couple things. Uh, first off, you'll want to attach a subscription to this CloudForms appliance, and that's what you signed up for the evaluation for. If you didn't already have a subscription, you can click register and log in from there. Now, alternatively, you could use a terminal here if you're used to subscribing hosts with subscription manager, which is actually the way I'm going to do it, uh, just because I've got this one liner to do so, and it'll be easy for me to edit this out. Alrighty, so I've gone ahead and registered the system, attached a subscription to it as well. We can double verify that here by going into the subscriptions portion of Cockpit and seeing that we do have both of our products properly subscribed. Now you can check out the rest of Cockpit if you'd like. I'm going to disable this service just to kind of get that warning away. And you could update the base packages, but instead what I'm going to do is start to set up this appliance. So to do that, what we want to do is uh, go into Appliance Console. And this is just a handy tool for you to start utilizing and configuring the CloudForms appliance. Now, if you look at the initial bit of configuration it provides us here, you'll notice that the CloudForms management engine server is not running, the database is not configured, and so on. So that's actually what we need to do first. Traditionally, you'd probably want to configure the networking and set up a few other things, but again, since this is just a demonstration and what we're really going to be using this for is just the migration analytics toolkit, all we really need to do is jump into here and configure a database. So we'll select option five and we'll create a new encryption key because it's a fresh environment. Now you have the choice of deploying an internal database or an external database and this database is a PostgreSQL database. You can connect it to an existing PostgreSQL database server or cluster that you have externally, but we'll just deploy a quick one internally here. So select one and you'll see Dev SDB, that 16 gig disk that we attached additionally to this VM, that's being listed here. So that's what we attached that additional disk earlier for. So we'll select that first one. Now, you're gonna to wanna to read this uh, question very carefully because it's actually kind of worded a little funny in my opinion. Uh, should this appliance run as a standalone database server? No, you don't want that because otherwise it won't launch the CloudForms management engine appliance and will just run the server. So since we actually want this all in one and select no rather uh, and then we'll give it a database region number so i'll just say 42 because it's a meaning of life hit a password into the prompt and from here it's going to initialize a database it's going to connect the appliance to the database and load the configuration and launch the appliance all right so after a few moments we've got our database running we've got it connected to the appliance configuration set and it's ready to roll. So press any key to continue here. And it'll give you another overview of our configuration. And now we'll notice that the database is running on the local host. It's got the region and everything configured there. The appliance server is actually running now as well. So that's nice. This is a great little overview to make sure everything actually proceeded properly. So we'll uh, just press any key to continue. Now from here, we could, again, provide a little additional configuration, but we won't need to right now. We will come back to this momentarily though, because there is one other thing we need to do before we really start to jump into the appliance. Now, since we are going to provide CloudFormations the vSphere environment to gain insight from it's as a infrastructure provider, what we need to do is download the VMDK uh, SDK from VMware. So if you can actually just Google VDK Say that three times fast. We'll click on this first little link for the virtual disk development kit. 6.7 is the version that's supported at this time. You'll click uh, the latest one, 6.7.3. So we'll click on download here. And you will need a VMware account in order to access this download. So in a moment, it'll probably prompt me for a login. I have a VMUG Advantage account. You can sign up for an account yourself. 
um, that's free. And again, this SDK is available to pretty much anyone. So we've got that downloaded here. And we'll want to somehow move it onto this appliance server. So we're at 115 and I'm on a Windows system here and probably one of the easiest ways to move this over will be uh, to just use WinSCP. If you're on a Linux or a Mac system, you can of course just use the SCP via the command terminal. And smartvm again is the password. We'll say yes, we accept. This is the system we want to connect to. Let's move over the VDDK this is a tar file. All right, we've got that set up now. We can exit out of here. Now we're back at our terminal. Let's do a quick listing and there it is. We'll extract the file we just moved over. Great. Now what we want to do is run a few commands to kind of put everything in its right place. And again, I'll link down to the documentation below so you don't have to read off the screen and find out what I'm doing. What I'm doing here though is just copying some of those files into its proper location, creating a few symbolic links. And now we want to do LD config in order for it to pick up the new uh, libraries. And then we'll just double check to make sure that it does in fact see it. So that's great. We've applied the VDDK to the system onto the CloudFormation appliance. Now what we want to do is go back into appliance console. All right, it gives us that configuration again. And we'll just simply restart the appliance. So select option 16 and let's do uh, restart and clean logs. Why not? Yes, we want to restart the appliance. All right, so it restarted the appliance and actually kind of recycled everything. So let's log back into the cockpit. Uh, systems back up. All right. Now we're at the cockpit right now at port 9090. In order to access the appliance itself, we we'll want to just go to the basic HTTPS port at 443. So click through the self-signed certificate. And if it's giving you a blank login, it's probably just because it's still warming up. Give this a refresh. All right, there we go. Now the login to the appliance is a little different from our root credentials. The username is admin and the password is smart VM. So let's log in. All righty. Once you do log in, you'll be brought here to our infrastructure providers page. And this is just because it doesn't have any sort of configuration, doesn't know anything about your infrastructure providers. And we're going to give it our vSphere environment to use. So just VMware, what type? Let's choose VMware vCenter. And we'll give it the host name for vCenter, the username and password. Click validate. All right, so once it's validated, you click on add and the VMware infrastructure provider has now been added. Now it shows zero hosts, zero machines and so on. That's because it's still scanning. So let's give that a moment and come back in about uh, 30 seconds. All right, so just after a few seconds, if you refresh the page, you can see that it is gathering information from that vCenter appliance. And so now that we have an infrastructure provider available we, from the left hand navigation bar, we'll select migration and scoot over to migration analytics. And we'll click the big get started button. It'll find out what sort of infrastructure providers we have. The VMware provider is what we're going to use. We'll click on clicked inventory. And then from here, select VMware again. Now we have our continue button enabled with that VMware provider selected. Now you could just do basic data and it'll just pull basic information of number of hosts, number of VMs and so on. However, since we included the VDDK, yeah, that's right. We can actually get some more detailed information 
and this will provide us additional insight into the workloads and see the level of effort involved in order to migrate it. So I'll click collect. I'll go out, do a quick little scan. And from there, we'll download this inventory file. All right, so this is just a little packaged JSON file that's been downloaded. And from here, what we'll want to do is navigate to cloud.redhat.com. Now you'll log in with your Red Hat Network account and you'll scroll down to Migration Services and click Open or Migration Analytics, whatever you'd like, and click Create. What you'll want to do is select that bundle file that you just downloaded. I'm going to use a different one though. My scanned environment. Give it a report name if you'd like. It just pulls from a JSON file's name. Uh, report description if you'd like. You'll want to set your general year-over-year -year growth for hypervisors. So if you've added, you know, 10 hosts every year or a rack every year, whatever your general percentage has been, add that here. And how quickly you believe you could migrate it depending on the information provided. So let's click Create Report. It'll upload that JSON file and close this prompt. And from here, we can click My Scanned Environment and find that over three years, we could migrate some of these workloads over to Red Hat Virtualization and save $3.7 million. And that includes the support from Red Hat in training and consulting services and additional you know, help along the way. So it's not just, here you go, good luck. Red Hat will provide you assistance in making this migration possible. You can step through the workload migration summary and the inventory and see the level of effort involved in migrating those actual VMs and all the applications running on it and so on. And again, you can kind of deep dive into the analytics provided here. Either way, thank you again for joining me on this stumble through. Hopefully that was valuable. Hopefully a quick little step through how you could utilize cloud forms and the migration analytics toolkit to gain a quick inventory of your environments and see if there's any sort of potential cost savings available to you from Red Hat. Either way, thank you again. And until next time, take care.